uh, just to, you know, uh, look at the, uh, the, um, the actual arm itself and, you know, not forgetting, uh, just what makes this kind of, uh, such a special machine is, you know, the ability to really, uh, you know, have this, the 180 degrees of rotation, uh, the ability to really, you know, flex the monitor forward, uh, back. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just really well designed. Um, you know, obviously, uh, I have a, uh, you know, a special affinity for this. Uh, it's just uh, very elegant and, um, you know, it almost makes this heavy monitor seem weightless. Uh, the effect is a little bit uh, better with the 17 and 15 inches, but uh, it's still, you know, pretty amazing with the uh, with the 20 inch. Uh, so, you know, let's go ahead and all we have to do now is uh, to press the native uh, power button. So, pressing this, we'll hear the drive spin on and we're going to see the uh, the BIOS come on. This is using Tony Max uh, uh, Mountain Lion uh, Unibeast install method. This does use a retail version uh, purchased from the Mac App Store, and it works great with this board. It was essentially as close as you could get to uh, to plug and play. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this down uh, while I go through. Uh, the computer with you. So, so here is a uh, mountain lion. This is uh, ten point eight, and just to show you a couple things. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And this is, uh, of course, uh, you know the uh, the home screen for mountain lion. Uh, just, you know, the mouse itself obviously works fine, uh, you know, the keyboard, uh, you know, it's up to you whether you want to use this keyboard or not, you know, if you do go ahead and do this mod, but uh, it just, again, I, I do favor it for, it is built for this, and a couple other things that, uh, you know, in terms of keeping the authenticity, you know, not only did I keep the power source, but because of just how small uh, this computer is, the actual motherboard, I was able to keep the disk drive. Uh, you know, initially, even with my Sandy Bridge board, I thought that was pushing it uh, when I used the, uh, with the ECX board because it did take away from the size of the heat sink I wanted to use. And uh, so it didn't, it didn't make me, you know, have to compromise. Uh, not so with this. Uh, there's almost, uh, although, you know, it's a tight fit. But it, it, it fits, uh, you know, uh, handily. If not, the, the space would be empty. So it is a, uh, a DVD burner that I do have in here. Uh, the DVD burner is uh, an internal drive, but it does use an SATA to um, uh, USB adapter and plugs uh, directly into the uh, Intel NUC board uh, that way. So I did have to use a, uh, a, a, um, a software hack in order to get the... Uh, the keyboard shortcut working, but again, you see that it, it does work and, you know, it does eject the, the DVD burner without a problem. And, you know, again, just with the, obviously this was designed so that, uh, you know, this would uh, release, you know, right over the top of the keyboard. So, you know, just nice, you know, those kind of touches when something is, you know, designed specifically, you know, for, and one of the reasons why I try to, you know, keep this with as many native components as possible. So, you know, just to, uh, just go ahead and close that, and so you know that's our DVD burner. Again, this is uh, Mac OS uh, ten point eight uh, Mountain Lion, and uh, I was uh, able to change the picture um, for about this Mac to get a uh, a picture of uh, an iMac uh, G four, and just to you know show you just you know a couple different things. Um, so. It is, uh, you know, listed as a, because of uh, the settings I chose in um, uh, multi-base. This is, a, I did use the uh, Mac Mini 6, comma uh, 1 settings, but see, uh, I'm not sure how well this is going to come out in terms of if you can see it, but it is a, a, a 1.7 gigahertz Intel Core i3 processor. Uh, it does support up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, I currently have 8 gigs uh, of uh, 1066 uh, DDR3. Uh, you see the Intel HD graphics, 4000. And um, again, uh, this is OS X 10.8.2. Uh, uh, now, uh, the native power source uh, allows me to do a lot more than the Pico power source on the previous one. It is a 190-watt 
uh, as opposed to the uh, 150, 60 watts uh, that I was getting with the uh, Pico power sources. So that allowed me to use the speakers uh, connected directly. I no longer have a fear of you know hooking up a, a couple high you know power demand USB um, devices at the same time and, and running into problems. So you know in that respect it is uh, it is you know quite strong. So uh, just to show you just a, you know a, a couple things there is a, uh, I got the model actually without Ethernet uh, and for me you know that's an advantage. Uh, there's just really no need. I was going to use this with a straight Wi-Fi. Uh, regardless, I guess there you could use the Thunderbolt and get a Thunderbolt to uh, Ethernet or a uh, USB to Ethernet if you uh, did need. Or you could get the other model, uh, uh, the Intel NUC, which does come with um, um, no Thunderbolt, but it does come with a, an extra HDMI port and does come with an Ethernet adapter. So uh, it, there is uh, an MSATA slot, uh, which is full uh, height, which allows you to uh, uh, get a, um, uh, a small solid state. Uh, drive and there is a half height for a Wi-Fi card so um, the Wi-Fi card uh, you know works great obviously uh, that's here you know airplay is obviously uh, a, you know a, a great feature nice to have with a uh, um, line 10.8 and you know Bluetooth uh, you can see that the uh, uh, trackpad is connected and just to show you obviously that the trackpad you know works fine um, you know I can do launch pad etc um, etc et and all you know gestures uh, do work fine, uh, you know, scrolling and so forth. So, um, you can probably hear the fan. It is, um, you know, it is audible. It was important for me to keep this cool. The uh, fan that's on it that was on the CPU I kept intact. And then I'm running the, um, uh, the uh, case fan right on top of it, uh, blowing air out. So, you know, I didn't want to cut it too close. I felt that the uh, the Sandy Bridge was running a little bit hot, and um, you know, this is a, a lower power uh, system, and it's uh, it's kind of got to get a, a better you know uh, thermal profile, so to speak, in terms of just how this is set up. So um, you know, I, I have not run into any problems even under load uh, where I've been even worried about this. So you know, it's a, a nice stable system, which is I think the most important thing when you build these. It's not just to uh, be able to turn it on for a second, but it's to know uh, that it's going to work and work for some time. Uh, just a you know, just a couple of things just to show you, just in terms of uh, you know how things function. Um, I'll go back just to you know just play something so that. Yeah, you can hear the speakers. Ever have a really cool dream? Yeah, the iFires work great. I'm having one right now. The screen itself. I don't want to be disturbed. You know, it is, uh, you know, it's not full HD. Sleep. It's 16 by 10, uh, but it, it, it's very close, and I, I still think it's, a, you know, uh, a certainly uh, uh, a very, very usable screen. Wrong. So... Those are the speakers, and looking at sound, I just want to show you the, uh, the input, which again, uh, if you can see that, the microphone, uh, which is embedded in here, uh, does work, sorry, it's on this side. Uh, the LED is also available. I didn't hook it up. I actually found it somewhat distracting, uh, so uh, I was going to hook it up to the hard disk. Uh, activity light, but then it was uh, kind of uh, you know going off uh, throughout. So instead, I decided just to you know right now just to uh, just to keep it uh, off. I do have the connector available in the base. You know, hook up to something if I, I so choose down the road. Uh, unfortunately, the only thing that does not work uh, is, is audio. Uh, you do need another audio solution. Uh, I chose a, a small audio uh, USB audio adapter called the Turtle Beach adapter. Did that because it allows me to plug the microphone directly in uh, after I uh, modified it to be able to fit onto a 3.5 uh, millimeter jack. And then I just uh, ran a, an extender uh, to be a port in the back allowing me to plug in any 3.5 millimeter audio device to be my audio out. So you know, that is a quick look at uh, this mod, which is the uh, iMac uh, G4 IV Bridge uh, Intel NUC all-in-one uh, mod. But, you know, um, I do, for those that are interested in this and have been following it, I, I definitely think this is the way to go. Uh, I just want to show you, this is the, uh, the box of the uh, 
uh, the Intel NUC. Uh, whether this model or the uh, the other model, they cost uh, you know I think two eighty for the uh, for the uh, lower cost one, and then this one is a little bit more expensive, around three hundred. But you do get the processor with it. You do have to buy the uh, uh, both the hard disk drive as well as the um, uh, the Wi-Fi card. And I've uh, taken the board out, but just uh, to show you, just you know, to give you a, a, a kind of an idea of just how small a board this is. Uh, the advantage of this is uh, they were tremendous. Um, it's you know, as someone who has uh, you know been very fond of small form factor boards, it's nice to see Intel really again making a consumer product uh, that's a small board. For a while, things have been getting smaller, but as they've gotten smaller, they've really just been getting flatter. And uh, the uh, width and um, you know and uh, and uh, depth, so to speak, of a uh, of a device is really uh, remained you know pretty much the same. And I use the uh, the new Mac Minis as an example, where the old Mac Minis certainly uh, were um, you know had a, a larger height. Um, the new Mac Minis are flattened out, but actually make it harder to fit in this in this uh, in this chassis because of that. So it's nice to see things really shrinking down in general. Now, the overall power of this, it, it, it's not going to be a, you know, a killer system. If you, you know, do want to do a mod where it's going to be a, uh, you know, a very, very high power um, type of setup, you know, a Core i7, you know, lots of cooling, you know, uh, you know a, uh, um, uh, a non-embedded graphics solution, I do recommend then just, you know, wiring this uh, to uh, using this just as a monitor, maybe using it as an optical drive case or uh, you know some type of uh, of a port hub, and then uh, using it with an external uh, computer simply because uh, you know this is a steel chase and it's 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 very small and, and it is a very very poor uh, cooling solution. And, you know Apple initially developed this to be convection cooled, meaning that the parts are actually stacked on top of each other with heat pipes. Uh, but, you know, in, in terms of modern air-cooled systems um, or even liquid-cooled systems, this is just, um, uh, you know, very poor ventilation. You have some slits on the bottom and then these holes on top, and that's it. So, I mean, this is something that you would never choose uh, to be a case for, you know, something that, uh, that ran on the hotter side or required any type of a complex cooling option. You know, that said, this is certainly comparable to, uh, you know, a modern-day Ultrabook. Uh, system and uh, you know it runs great. It runs uh, you know mount line very smoothly, and I think it makes um, you know a nice uh, you know uh, family computer or second all in one. Um, and there are going to be instructions uh, in terms of uh, you know how to do this specifically on my blog at uh, at dremeljunkie.com, and I have uh, I specifically uh, go into a lot of detail in terms of how to get the original LCD screen. Uh, with the native wires going through the neck, so it does not end up opening the neck at all, and wire that to a uh, DVI connector, allowing it to be compatible with any uh, DVI or HDMI source. And um, you know, with uh, the right connector, uh, it's really not that hard to do. And uh, you know, after a, a few years of doing this, when I finally found this DVI connector, you know, it has saved me uh, um, a lot of time. So this special connector, which is a five dollar piece, is something I highly recommend if this is something you're planning. In terms of how this is organized, the power supply is on the side. The fan is in the middle. There is the, uh, in where the 3.5 millimeter um, hard drive used to be, is sitting the entire motherboard, including its MSATA and, uh, and Wi-Fi card, sitting right here underneath the fan. Then you have the disk drive taking up pretty much the rest of the case. And then uh, that reserved the, uh, the bottom of the case, really, where I could do uh, some wire management. Uh, just to get into specifics about some problems that did arise with this, power is a little bit of an issue in terms of powering the board as well as powering the peripherals. Uh, the way that the power supply works uh, from the native 20 inch I'm actually for, this is only the 20 inch, is that unlike regular power supplies, uh, ATX power supplies that really uh, are both inverters, meaning they take an AC current and they turn it into DC, as well as um, uh, uh, as well as DC converters, meaning that they either up convert uh, or most of the time obviously down convert uh, to different voltages, meaning that you have you know 120 volts AC gets turned into 12 volts DC, 
and then that gets uh, down converted to 5 volts and 3.3 uh, volts to be used with uh, your peripherals and such. Unlike that, the way the native power source here worked is that it gave 12 volts, and with one exception, I'll talk about in a second, and that's it. It actually relied on the motherboard itself to do the down conversion for it. And, um, you know, that made it a little bit tricky in terms of, um, you know, how, uh, in terms of, um, you know, using it uh, as an, uh, an ATX power source. But it actually ended up being a very clever solution uh, that Apple did here that actually ends up being somewhat advantageous. So at the second this is plugged in, the power supply is actually on. Um, and what happens is, is that the monitor itself requires 24 volts. So the power supply can upconvert 12 volts to 24 volts. However, it relies on a 5 volt switch to turn on that 24 volt line. So what do I mean? Well, 12 volts comes in um, from the power supply and goes to uh, the motherboard. When you turn the motherboard on, it actually then down converts 12 volts to 5 volts and sends 5 volts back to a sensor on the power supply and that once it receives 5 volts it turns on the 24 volts uh, allowing the monitor to turn on so um, you know you know what I was able to do with that is uh, I was able to use a uh, a 5 volts coming from a USB uh, to uh, for the Intel NUC board to kind of give that signal back so it essentially was down converting for me um, in order to uh, um, to turn the monitor on, so that's uh, you know uh, what you know uh, an easy solution uh, in terms of that. Another thing that has to be taken care of, which is really not too big a deal, but the uh, the NUC actually requires 19 volts, uh, while obviously this supplies 12 volts. So you do need a DC to DC um, uh, up converter to turn uh, 12 volts to 19 volts. These can be had for uh, you know um, you know. Uh, ten or so dollars, um, and um, you know fits pretty easily within the chassis. So um, it's a very uh, a small device, and with those uh, you know couple of tricks, uh, again this can get up and running. And so far, I've been really uh, quite amazed with its uh, with its stability. Uh, the temperatures I've been getting have been great, and um, you know I'm looking forward to using this in the future. Again, I'm going to post uh, more details about this and. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, uh, email me at uh, dremeljunkie at gmail.com or uh, post uh, something at my blog, which is, uh, again, www.dremeljunkie.com. Um, thank you for uh, taking the time, and um, I hope to hear from you. Thank you.